Hello and welcome to all our viewers from across the world. You're watching the uh, TR Business uh, May Ezine and our special Asia Pacific Beauty Report, which of course can be read and viewed during the TFWA live in-person networking event on the 9th to 11th of May, which of course replaces the TFWA Asia Pacific Exhibition and Conference. I'm really excited to be joined for this interview by Sebastian Levy. He's the Vice President Global Travel Retail at Moroccan Oil, that of course specialise in argan oil infused hair care products. Sebastian, it's great to catch up with you again. My pleasure. Pleasure being here. Sebastian, I want to ask to begin, if you can just characterise Moroccan Oil's performance in 2021 in terms of its trading and indeed in the first quarter uh, of this year. Okay, uh, broadly speaking, it was uh, 2021 has been a, actually a record year for Moroccan Oil at the worldwide level. So we've been uh, we've been blessed to actually count on an omni-channel um, strategy that is that has really been paying off, you know, uh, for the last few years, especially since the pandemic, um, because we really had like for a while, like of course, a lot of digital sales, you know, when the head where the head was closed, we had a lot of customers moving on, you know, to um, to to Amazon.com, to Sephora.com, to everything which was digital, and when it reopened. Um, we actually understood that we not only kept our customers, but we really uh, conquered new ones during the pandemic. So basically, our business is thriving in uh, in all channels, which is very important. You know, we're um, we're first and foremost a professional brand. So of course, our partnership with hairdressers is is key for us. So we're very it's very important for us that they're thriving. But we really understand that we've really been able to uh, to uh, to gain new customers. And to also actually bring for the consumers the ability to actually switch channels. You know, a consumer can buy a shampoo at a hairdresser, uh, a marketable treatment online, then go to a Sephora store. So it's really like our multi-channel approach, digital and brick and mortar, hairdressers and retail is really paying off. So 2021 has been a very, very good year for us. And the first quarter has been extremely positive also for us. Uh, basically, across the board, Europe is performing well. America is performing well. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit slower in Asia, but actually, we we're actually seeing a difference between local market and our retail, uh, where actually local market is doing pretty well in Asia right now, uh, which it also did in 2021. We're struggling a little bit more in our retail, probably not the only ones, but of course, with the restrictions of travel, with the fact that major airports like Singapore or Hong Kong have been have been closed has been really a, a complicated business for us. I would add to that that we had limited presence in China uh, because of animal testing. So everything which was domestic travel in China, we couldn't really benefit from it. Uh, so that's why we have a mixed picture, mixed picture in Asia, but the overall picture is extremely positive for the brand. That's very positive here, Sebastian. With regards to Asia, as we all know, there's continued volatility, continued uncertainty, particularly around travel restrictions. And the general consensus across the industry is that we're not going to see that recuperation of travel volumes until around Q4 at the earliest. Is that what you are seeing? Are there any signs to suggest otherwise at this point, particularly for your business? To, to, to be perfectly transparent with you, no. This is, we, we're still seeing, we, we're seeing some signs of recovery. You know, customers that didn't order anything in 21 that have placed some orders uh, in Q1 2022. But to really get back to, uh, to pre-COVID numbers in Asia, Q3 might actually be even more, might be optimistic. You know, for us, we see that more in 2023, maybe 2024. Uh, that doesn't prevent us, you know, from keeping our investments in Asia into our retail. This is, of course, a major region for us. This is a priority for us. Uh, but of course, we also need to look at reality and to understand that business is coming back slowly. I'm not worried because we know that the the, the customers, the market of customers in Asia are very loyal. They're there because we see that we see that they keep buying our products in the local market. So. We understand that when we, but when travel starts again, you know, um, to to Europe or to Americas, we're gonna benefit from that, you know, when people are traveling. But in travel retail per se, I think we need to we need to be patient and resilient in Asia. In terms of the category as a whole, Sebastian, the health and wellness 
such a category and obviously of course for yourselves hair care and and self-care and we'll talk a little bit um, about that in in, uh, in in some coming questions but are you still facing the same kinds of constraints in the application of treatment-based services that perhaps you would have seen a year ago 18 months ago at airports and across other travel retail channels in in asia pacific and if so how are you kind of confronting that that challenge okay to to, to be fair i think most of our products uh intra retail being hair care especially in asia um we have limited testing abilities in hair care anyhow uh, so this is this is not. I couldn't say that this is a major factor for us that is really against us when it comes to setting our products in travel retail. Really, for us, the major hurdle we're facing is just the lack of open stores, uh, traffic in the stores, people traveling and people buying. That's really for us the, the hurdle we we've been facing. I would just add to to that because you, you you were also talking about the categories. What we've noticed though, and I'm talking broadly, not only travel retail, is that in the last two years, hair care has actually across the board, being the category in cosmetics that has grown the most, uh, ahead of skincare, ahead of makeup. Um, so that that is for us something which is, of course, extremely positive, and we're benefiting from that. Um, and again, when it comes to constraints per se, when it comes to testing, this is more something that applies to our body range, which is a very important range, and that we're actually fully renovating in 2022. So I guess the hurdles that we might be facing, especially in Asia for body, we're about to face them, you know, in the next few months when we truly launch and relaunch actually this category. When it comes to Europe, though, uh, testing testing has not been quite a big issue, you know, in the last few months. So we've really seen that uh, the operators they have let the brands, you know, you know, send back testers and give the the consumers the ability to test the products. So when it comes to body in Europe. I think it's going to be in a, we're, we're going to be in a good place in Asia. Yes, it's going to be a, it's going to be a hurdle definitely. And I want to ask you specifically about ranges dedicated to Asian hair. I know the Moroccan oil has been involved in this segment with products. How are those products being received? Obviously, we know the challenges in Asia Pacific with the travel volumes, but in general, can you comment a little bit on that? And are there particular markets? within APAC when the travel volumes recover that you see this yielding particular demand? Okay, the, the year 2022 is going to be actually for us a um, very important year in that regard. This is the first time that we having a local development, and in that case for Asian hair. So we're going to launch, we're launching actually this year two, two important ranges, hairy moisture and intense moisture. Um, the reception from the distributors in the local markets, from the operators in Toronto has been extremely positive. Uh, in itself, because the range is amazing, but also because I think it shows the interest and the dedication of Mark Arnold to that region. So it's a little bit early for me to tell you the consumer response to that, but we'll have probably you know feedback in in the coming weeks and months. But coming, you know, again, seeing the first response at the at the corporate uh, corporate response and the customers' response, we feel really excited about that. Because again, for us, I think it it proves our dedication to the range. We know that. The bread again is very, very strong in Asia historically. You know, we uh, uh, we have one headquarters, we have one office in Japan. I think it proves the dedication of the brand to to Asia. Um, so Asia has been very, very important for us. So important that we actually want to have uh, to go even further with the local development that we believe for our retail is going to be amazing. Not only tomorrow for Hong Kong airports or Singapore airports, but also in places where Asian passengers, you know, love to travel. Like tomorrow, we can definitely imagine this range in Paris, in Paris, Charles de Gaulle, uh, or in Frankfurt, for instance. So for us, it, it means a lot. And as for retail, this is definitely a blessing. I want to just jump back to something you mentioned earlier in the interview regarding multi-channel and the importance you're placing on that. We know, of course, there's been real heightened consumer attention towards self-care exacerbated by by the pandemic and spending a lot more time at home and uh, greater attention to to health and wellness as i mentioned before now moroccan oil has been ramping up its digital activities uh, i know in that regard particularly in, in the domestic markets to drive online sales as countries emerge from the lockdowns as many of which have now and travel restrictions lift how important a role is digital playing can you just elaborate a little bit more on your omni-channel strategy 
Well, um, digital, you know, as I say, you know, has been a, a blessing, you know, with or without the pandemic. You know, it, it's definitely a new way for the consumer to shop. That was the case before COVID, and that's going to be the case during COVID, definitely, and then after COVID. I think that we need to give the, the consumer the ability to uh, to basically mix channels and to shop uh, where, wherever this person wants to shop. I mean, this is crucial for us. And, and more and more, you know, the consumer and especially our customers, they wouldn't understand that we don't really have a strong digital presence. This is all the, all the more the case as we having a major social media presence. Uh, so it's important for us to be consistent with this dedication to media investment, social media presence, and then of course uh, at, at the at the business level. Um, Amazon is a, is an amazing example for us, an amazing partner for us. Uh, but also the the e-taters, you know, it's it's when you deal with Sephora, when you deal with other players, you are of course dealing with omni-channel players. So they wouldn't understand that you know that you would limit your presence only to brick and mortar stores. So for us it's kind of a natural a, a natural uh, like strategy for us. I would add to that that uh, our own website, you know, marketable.com is also becoming more and more important in our portfolio, in our omni-channel, because we also want to have a direct-to-consumer relationship. Of course, our partnership with the industry, whether it's in professional or retail, is very important, but it's also important to have a direct line of communication. So uh, we've been push, put, putting a lot of energy also and investment, you know, in our own website in order to also entertain this conversation. So the consumer during a during a week, you know, can browse on our website and check, you know, what's what's new at Marconal, buy one product, then it goes um, to Sephora, buys another product, then browsing online to buy to buy books and then buy a product on Amazon.com, and then of course getting a haircut and getting an extra product. So that's really how we see this uh, this omnichannel journey. So for us, it's like a natural journey. I can tell you that. The digital team has been growing a lot in the last two years at Mark and and I think it says a lot about um, about how key this is for us. Uh, and we're going to continue those, those investments definitely because this is. I, I, I was about to say that this is the future, but no, this is the present. So this is the present, and we need actually to amplify that in the future. I want to just develop this conversation on the digital side, Sebastian, a little bit more specifically focusing on Hainan which obviously I know that you have, have a well-established presence now, but on the digital side, the regulation changed last year that allows customers purchasing duty-free products in physical shops and through approved online outlets to have them delivered to their homes. And this is a relatively recent phenomenon. While there appears to be a clear appetite for online post-travel duty-free purchases, and we've seen that in recent research conducted by Mindset, We've also seen that a small amount of those customers are using home delivery, and that's mainly due to inconvenience. So whilst there's the propensity to shop online, utilising that home delivery service uh, seems to still be quite embryonic and people have reservations around it. So my question is, have you explored home delivery? Is this something in Hainan in particular that you would be interested in utilising? OK. Here again, you know, we're among friends, so I'm going to be very transparent with you. Um, right now, we we feel that it's it's very important. I think the expression in English is, I think we need to uh, to walk before running or something like that. So that's a little bit where we are right now. My point to you is that our priority for us is to establish a very strong presence in Ainan uh, with the the trial retail operators. So we have we have a partnership going on with DFS. And we're gonna be we're gonna be actually able to launch the brand in Ainan in the next few weeks, uh, and we want to expand the brand in Ainan in really in the in the physical stores. That's really our priority at this stage. We're definitely not against you know home delivery at the later stage, but for us, our priority in Toronto is definitely Ainan. You know, with the physical players. So we'll see where we are. And at the same time, we also have a plan. You know, to launch uh, the brand with Sephora in China in in 2022. That's also going to be a major priority. So I guess that the discussion about home delivery in China is going to take place definitely because again, as I said, you know, we we totally for omni-channel. Home delivery is part of the strategy. You know, is part of the omni-channel strategy. But since our presence in China is fairly limited for the reasons that I've explained earlier, and that Ainan for us is our also entry gate to travel retail in China, this is really what we want to focus on in 2022. And we will probably revisit this situation and this opportunity in 2023. 
Okay, well, we'll be keeping a keen eye on your developments there. I just wanted to ask you as a final question, Sebastian, then you've refreshed your body care line for 2022, and I mentioned that at the start. Just tell us a little bit about the developments here, bring us up to date on, on the progress being made, and, and what can customers expect from Rock and Ore's range in 2022? All right, so I think that, so you can see some of the products just behind me. Uh, we are very, very excited. You know, we've um, we've launched we've launched Body Care in 2013, so six years after uh, really the establishment of Marconot as a brand. So Body Care is really a part, a very important part of who we are as a brand. You know, we're really a lifestyle beauty brand, a complete beauty brand. Not only hair care, of course, we have professional roots in hair care, but we're more than that. Um, this renovation that we've done, you know, more sustainable, more sense, more um, more products. Is an amazing opportunity for us. So we started last year, September, October in North America. When it comes to travel retail, the major, major wave is going to take place as we speak, March, April, whether it's Europe, Asia, or the Americas. Um, I can tell you that um, the, the operators have welcomed the, the products, you know, with a lot of excitement, you know, um, with space, you know, given in some stores. Uh, and and what we notice is that we've launched, we've actually renovated two products already, and in the last six months, the reception has been absolutely amazing. Uh, I could also add to that that since March 1st, we've been setting our all new range uh, online at marconal.com that I was telling you about, and the reception has been amazing. So there is a lot of curiosity, you know, for us. I think that our legitimacy in, in body care is not too proof. Definitely, you know. Consumers want more, they want to discover more, they want to try more, and not only a fragrance original, but more sense. What they can expect is what we've been doing, you know, for four years, you know, is really uh, giving hydration, giving protection, giving um, products that are here to stay. You know, we are, we're not just doing a one-shot amazing launch, it's really something that is here to stay. Uh, you know, Morocco is famous, you know, for self-care, uh, hydration, protection. These, those are exactly the values that we're going to give and also the sensorial approach. You know, the very names of the scents that we're gonna launch for those range says a lot. You know, we have Ambiance de Plage, we have um, uh, Oud Mineral, we had uh, a Bergamot Fraiche. Sorry, those are French names, I'm really proud of it. But we're talking about a sensorial journey that into the Mediterranean. So we really want the consumers to embrace those, those scents, those new gestures, shower gels, uh, hand wash, to experience them, to leave them and we fully expect them, you know, to enjoy them and, and try more. And, 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 you know, we really want to build on body care exactly the same kind of loyalty base, loyal base, I'm sorry, that we've been, that we've been able to establish in, um, in hair care. And we feel extremely confident about that. Your passion for the equity through those new lines really comes through, Sebastian. Thank you for sharing it with us. And we're really looking forward to tracking Rock and Oil's progress this year. Sebastian Levy, Rock and Oil, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was great. Thank you.